The WNBA season starts in a little less than two weeks, and the first preseason game is today. The attention and interest that Caitlin Clark is bringing into the league has never been seen before. Her dominance at the collegiate level and her popularity means she has very high expectations put on her. Today we will look at the strengths and weaknesses of Caitlin Clark's game and try to give a realistic projection of how her rookie season will go. Caitlin Clark is in a unique situation compared to other first round picks, not just because of her generational talent, but because of the team she went to. The first overall pick in drafts across any sport are usually going to a terrible situation in terms of the talent around them. But in Caitlin Clark's case, she will have no shortage of talent around her. There's no way the fever should have been as bad as they were, but I have a feeling that will change very soon. It cannot be overstated how important Caitlin Clark going to the Indiana Fever is. She isn't forced to be on a bad team that barely has any talent around her. She won't have to deal with multiple years of losing seasons like Sabrina Ionescu did, and opposing teams can't dedicate their entire scouter report just trying to stop her. Caitlin is loaded with skills on the offensive side of the ball. This is evidenced by her being the all-time points scorer in collegiate basketball, but also second all-time in assists. Her shooting and passing alone will prevent her from being a bust. Someone who can play point guard and shoot is something every team needs. Her court vision is unmatched. It's very rare for Caitlin to not hit the open teammate every time. Because of this, it's virtually impossible to double team her. And I expect it to be the same in the WNBA, especially considering the talent around her. Obviously the defense will be much tougher in the WNBA, which means there's less margin for error in terms of passing windows but I think that will even out by her being surrounded by very talented teammates. Players at Iowa miss shots that most of her Indiana Fever teammates would make in their sleep. Being an elite off dribble shooter is a must have for guards in the WNBA. It's the difference between having a Ryan Howard type rookie season or a Haley Jones level rookie year. Caitlin being six feet tall and being able to shoot so well off the dribble means she will be frustrating to guard, even in her first year. Caitlin Clark has the most range out of any player in college, and just her first day in the league, she'll have the most range in the WNBA. I'm very curious to see how the WNBA will handle her shooting logo threes. I wouldn't be surprised if they play the percentages and let her shoot them instead of risking her passing to one of her teammates. Because she's used to shooting so far already, there's going to be zero learning curve in terms of adjusting to the three-point line being further back. Despite being ball dominant at Iowa, Caitlin is a very good off-the-ball scorer. I'm hoping that Indiana takes advantage of this. Indiana has many skilled guards, so Caitlin doesn't have to bring the ball up every time, and they could set up some easier shots for her. Caitlin is very good at drawing fouls, and I think she'll draw even more in the WNBA. This is mainly due to the reckless closeout rule. It will be interesting to see how new fans react to this rule. I think it's one of the worst rules in basketball, because it blatantly encourages flopping and players to stick their leg out on jump shots. But that's a topic for another day. No one will love this rule more than Caitlin Clark. Either people will have to let her shoot step backs or risk her getting three free throws in the ball. I expect her to lead all guards in the free throw attempts. Caitlin Clark is one of the best transition players in college, and this will translate well in the WNBA. When she goes on a fast break, she can either kick it out to a teammate, pull up for three, or drive herself. The Indiana Fever will easily have a top three transition offense next year. The Fever have multiple people that run the floor or leak out to the three point line and Caitlin will be there to give them the ball. The final piece to the puzzle for Caitlin's offensive skill set is her driving ability. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter of all time, but he would not be the player he is today if it wasn't for his elite driving ability. Great shooters need to counter players who try to run them off the three-point line, and Caitlin is able to do that. She excels at changing speeds and using her body as a shield to make it difficult for defenders to block her. Players are afraid of her passing on a dribble penetration which allows her to get easy layups. All these skills will allow Caitlin to make a major impact even as a rookie. Just a quick disclaimer before I get into the flaws in her game. I plan on doing future breakdowns of other incoming WNBA players as well. It's going to sound like I'm being harsh, but it's because this is professional basketball. Players don't get away with things they did in, in high school or even college. Caitlin Clark is a generational player. She's a player that will win multiple MVPs in her career, but she does have flaws that are very exploitable. When I hear experienced analysts like Rebecca Lobo imply she will be an MVP level player in her first year, I just shake my head because they know better. But let's get into it. Caitlin Clark has what I like to call Josh Allen syndrome. 
When someone is so gifted at passing, they see things that aren't there. And this results in turnovers. She averaged four and a half turnovers in her college career. And with the massive increase in defensive intensity in the WNBA, it's likely to get worse. There's two types of defenders Caitlin really struggles with. Ones that play physical and ones that are taller than her, but have similar mobility. But why is this the case? She struggles against physical defenses because of her reliance on push-offs. It's hard to say how the WNBA will ref this, but if they don't call the foul, stronger players are able to fight through and crowd her space rather than fall backwards. She struggles with tall mobile defenders because her layup package is very basic. Every time she drives, it's either a basic layup off the glass or she passes it out. It's too predictable. To combat this, she needs to develop an elite floater game. Players like Asia Wilson and BG are going to erase her shot. She doesn't have the athleticism to directly finish over them, so a floater will disrupt the timing of shot blockers. Caitlin Clark's defense has significantly improved over her college career. She's great at getting the occasional steal and block. However, her defense is not up to standard of the WNBA. Lisa Bluter got around her mediocre defense by having her guard the weakest perimeter scoring option each game. The problem is, a lot of teams don't have a weak scoring guard in their starting lineup. Caitlin Clark gets away with a lot of defensive lapses that she won't in the WNBA. She routinely gives up wide open jump shots. There's players that made her pay for this in college, but a lot of times she lucks out and they miss. She has a very hard time fighting over screens on defense. And there's a lot of times where she doesn't even attempt to get around the screen. It's one thing to get stuck, it's another to not try. The good news is, everything I said is very fixable. But Christy Sides has to be intentional about having her improve these things. Only time will tell. Now that her strengths and weaknesses are out the way, how will this translate against other teams? Teams in the green are ones where I expect her to put up ridiculous stat lines every time they play. The teams in the yellow section are teams where I think in some games she will look really good against them, but in other games she will struggle. The red section is teams I think she will despise playing against. Caitlin Clark will have a field day on the New York Liberty. She will not be able to guard the other players on that team, but they can't guard her either. Their perimeter defense is weak. It will be the same story with the Atlanta Dream and the Los Angeles Sparks. Those games will be the ultimate shootout. I have a strange feeling Diana will be on the IR report when the Fever play the Mercury. But Natasha Cloud will be able to bother her on the perimeter and Brittany Griner will make it hard for her to score inside. But everyone else is torchable. The Connecticut Sun always seems to give players trouble, even if they are really skilled. Caitlin will have issues with dribble penetration versus the sky. If they put Angel and Cardoso on the floor at the same time, Dallas has waves of guards they can throw at Caitlin, which I think will hurt her efficiency. But the three teams I think Caitlin will absolutely despise playing are the Aces, Lynx, and Storm. There's gonna be no possessions off on the defensive end when she plays the Lynx. She's either going to have a quick smaller guard attacking her, or she will have to deal with someone long and strong like Nafisa or Diamond Miller. Caitlin Clark will be exhausted against the Aces. They have a three-headed monster at the guard position, and whoever Clark has to guard is going to be hunting her every play, and Skyler hunting her on defense. And when one of them gets tired, she will have to deal with Nika Mool harassing her, and it will be hard for her to score in the paint. I'll wrap up this video by giving projections. I believe her rookie season she'll average around 18 points per game. I expect her to have several games where she scores 25 to 30 points. But I also think there's a lot of games where she will struggle. I expect her to average a similar amount of assists as she did in college. The competition is better, but so are her teammates, so it should even out. The biggest issue I think will be the turnovers. She has never averaged less than four in college. And I think that's all but guaranteed to remain the same or go up. I went with 4.5 because I think her usage rate won't be as high. I have her shooting under 40% from three because of the high difficulty of the threes she'll be taking. I do not expect her to be impressive defensively, which is why I have her steals and blocks so low. In terms of individual accolades, I think she handily gets Rookie of the Year. She will without a doubt be an all-star starter. I don't think she'll just lead rookies in assists. I think she will double the average of the next person. If Caitlin Clark puts up the numbers, I think she will. I would consider that a highly successful season. I'll definitely follow up this video a few months from now. Comment down below on how well you think Caitlin Clark will do this season. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.